Hello, Bradley and Kate in one of her first appearances in an actual review mm -hmm. for these very cute Jackrabbit e-bikes. Uh, they're brand new. We have been testing them to see if we're going to carry them at EVs. Yeah, it's looking promising. Uh, they were a lot of fun. The unique thing about these e-bikes and the thing that really got me excited about carrying them is it's the only personal electric vehicle that you can take on an airplane. You take the battery out, it's this big. You can bring up to two of them per person as a carry-on. It comes with a cute little bag. I got thoughts about the bags I'll describe later. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly cool that you could fly with these things and then not have to take Ubers and, and explore and the question was, is it worth the hassle of carrying around the bag and zipping it up, zipping it back, going through customs, all that stuff? Uh, and the answer is yes. And we'll go Definitely. through our yeah, we'll go through our trip. Mm -hmm. You said especially how much yeah, you love them. I was apprehensive about it because we tried flying with like our one wheels. I can't remember. I think it was the XR. Yeah, it was a nightmare. Almost... And it was awful. I mean, like things you wouldn't even think about, like the tire sealant being an issue but anyway <laughs> yeah. this was a lot more simple and definitely worth it so let's go over a little bit of the specs on the bikes there's two models this is the og and then that i think they called the xg and the og the battery gets up to 10 miles or 17 18 kilometers per charge and the motor is the 350 watt motor that can take you up to 32 kilometers an hour surprisingly a lot of oomph out of these things. Now, when you go up steeper hills, they do slow down a bit, but that is when the XG shines, as the XG can go, it has a 500 watt motor, so you have a lot more power of that thing. And uh, same top speed, 32 kilometers an hour, but it's gonna take you up hills better. As you can see, there's two batteries that go in that one. And uh, theoretically, you should get double the range of the OG, but you have more power, so if you're going full throttle on that thing, I don't think you will. Now, they have not made a travel bag for the XG yet, otherwise we would have brought that one on our trip as well. Uh, so we haven't done a full review of the XG, but we wrote it enough to be able to give you our thoughts on it. Um, they, <laughs> when it comes down to it, they're a lot of fun. You do look a little silly. I think that's the part of the joy of it though. Like you feel like it's a toy. And also people love it. Like when they see you riding by, like you get, I don't know, a lot of smiles and it feels a little bit like you're in Mario Kart, honestly. <laughs> like, especially with the little helmets, like toad or whatever, but it's a lot of yeah, fun. They were a lot of fun. So let's go over the experience of actually traveling with these things. Now the bag is my biggest beef with the Jackrabbit is the bag. Uh, it was not easy to put in the first time. In fact, none of our employees could figure it out. And I had a call with the CEO, and he kind of went over with me in person, gave me confidence that it will fit. And sure enough, it did fit. But I was a lot of sweat. It was bad first impression, because immediately I was like, ooh, that's a bad first impression. I will say, after you've taken it in of the bag a few times, I think the bag stretches out a little bit. And I had no issue putting them in the bag since. But that first experience, I was sweating, I was swearing, I was... You yeah. didn't want to be around me. It's not fun when Bradley is a little bit <laughs> But it was, honestly, it was like pretty smooth sailing, like yeah. the whole experience. So we get to the airport. Uh, first of all, they're 24 pounds for the OG, 32 pounds for the XG. Uh, without the battery, I think it's about two pounds lighter. So carrying them in the bags was, they're really lightweight and they're easy to throw on. They fit in all our Ubers. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we really had to squeeze them in on our Uber on the way there. Uh, yeah. Some cars were easier than others, but we were able to fit them in every Uber we took without requesting an Uber XL, which was nice and saved yeah. us some money going to the airport. Getting to the airport, they wouldn't fit in the x-ray scanner. Like, it just wouldn't fit on the conveyor belt, the, the bags, and this is where we'll roll some b-roll. I had to open the bags up, the guy wanted to swab the inside, so we had to take the, both bikes completely out of the bag. One of the zippers was already broken on the bag from the, yeah. when we first got it. The bag does need work, but uh, I've talked to Jack Rabbit, they are, they do say they're gonna improve them in the, in the future. So we got them swabbed, we zipped them back up. It was about a five minute hassle that uh, in the end ended up being worth it. I will say Canadian TSA agents are way more strict. When we had the, the batteries, they both checked the batteries, they had to get a manager over to make sure they were okay. Coming back to, uh, in, in the US LAX airport, back to Canada, they didn't even look at the batteries. They went through the scanner, there was no issues. 
That is the case every time I travel. Every time I, I travel or we travel, driving, driving or flying, Canadian customs agents and TSA agents are way more strict than American, which is yeah. surprising to be honest. But just... we also got like a bunch of random checks, like on top of it all. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe it was like the... it was. Yeah, we got the random, the random checks. But it was just like that lady asking, like, you have a laptop, and I was like, yeah, and then we just got extra checks. But anyway. <laughs> so we we get them on the plane, and one, once they're on the checked on the luggage, you don't have to worry about them. We're we we had no baggage. We checked our other luggage because might as well we're already checking the, the bikes. We arrive. Uh, they they come in the oversized baggage bin and call it an Uber to the the hotel, and they were amazing because we unzipped them, we set them up, which takes less than two minutes. And we rode around Venice Beach and uh, Santa Monica, almost all the way up to Malibu area. And the cool thing is, and we'll post a photo of it, but we ran into our one wheel buddies, like people that I knew from years ago that I used to ride with and see at events all the time. Like I was close to these guys. Uh, and they just so happened to be riding around Venice Beach the same time we were. So that was really cool to, to see them there and uh, ride with the, the one wheel mm -hmm. guys. And the cool thing is the top speed is around the same top speed as the one wheels. And those guys looked at these things and like, oh man, I, I want to get one of these. Like my wife would love one of these. She doesn't like yeah. the one wheel, so she'd They're actually ride these. So they were looking at them and I saw their wheels turning. So it was cool to see everyone else's reactions and it wasn't just me getting excited about this new product category because it's not a real bike. There are no change, there are yeah. no pedals. There's foot foot pedals, but there's no, you can't. It's a really relaxing way to get around and it definitely like expanded what we could do on our trip and made it just like a lot more, like free, have a lot more freedom and not need to worry about transportation and just getting to ride up and down the beach was like, it was worth the hassle it was so getting them there. Yeah. Um, I will say as well, I was able to get 11 miles, more than their estimated mileage, uh, riding, and you still had three bars, full bars of battery left. Now I'm sure some of it was drained. And our first day riding, and she didn't even have to change her battery over. I had to change my battery. But I also like think it could have been because you don't really have to press the throttle the whole time. You can kind of coast on it. You can like press the throttle and then it'll just keep kind of going for a yeah, while. Yeah, you can't really do that, that on an electric scooter. No. So, uh, so I think that's maybe why I conserved battery because I, was, I really wasn't. I had a heavy thumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a heavy thumb for sure. So we had to change the battery. To change the battery out, it was quite simple. You just unzip the Velcro uh, and this comes with the extra battery. If you buy an extra battery, it comes with this little bag that goes underneath the seat. And yeah, you, you pop it out, you use the little key to switch to, it's like a little tiny key to get the battery out. Uh, the cool thing with XG is there's no key, you just flick a switch, which I kind of like better. So yeah, swapping the battery halfway through the ride was no trouble at all. I was worried it was gonna be a hassle mm -hmm. and no, it was super easy. You didn't even need to carry a backpack with it because of the, the, the bag. And we also had a cool accessory that they sell that's like a phone holder and it also can hold your keys and wallet uh, that mounts on the top as well. Um, that was handy to have because it yeah, allowed me to look at navigating. Google Maps for directions to the restaurants we were Super going handy. to. Um, on a disclaimer, we forgot our helmets. We did not wear our helmets uh, on these bike paths. But we weren't really in the city. It was mostly just along like the flat like beach path. So yeah. it still like you should wear your safety wear your helmet. Gear. Always wear <laughs> Always. your helmet. Yeah, we we messed up, uh, and that's something we're really strong about. We don't ever want to have videos of us showing us riding without helmets, so this is a big boo-boo in our part. But mm -hmm. anyway, there's a few other accessories that the Jackrabbit sells. One of them is a suspension seat that really cushions the seat. Mind you, it will not fit in the travel bag, so I wanted to bring the suspension seat with us. Uh, it would not fit in the bag, so the only way you'd be able to do it is if you took the seat out and put it in your, your luggage. Uh, the other thing is there's a fender kit. I will say uh, it's pretty cheap quality. Uh, the front fender kit, the, the screw stripped, it wouldn't even go on. The back one is sitting on the XG right now, but it's it's a flimsy fender. I hope they improve those in the future. There's a light kit that we got late, so we haven't got to test those out yet, but no lights at night. It was a little concerning. It was hard to see the path in front of us. Uh, we tried to stick to like yeah. lit up, the lit up part sections of the bike path. But you can just grab any old. Bike light. There's a lot of, yeah, and they sell them. So yeah. there's a lot of cool little add-ons you can get for these. They have upgraded foot pedals. Um, and overall, it's a fun little bike that you can kind of kit out and personalize to, to your liking. 
Another nice thing was that they're so light, you can just carry them onto the beach. Like, if you don't want to lock them up, you can yeah. pretty much just have them next to you, like, almost Yeah, we li literally walked them down the beach and sat them next to us and went for yeah. swim in the ocean and sunbathed. And people kept asking us about them because they were just so weird seeing a tiny Looks little like bike. Bikes. And we're, you can carry it with two fingers. Like, yeah. they, they are incredibly light. They're lighter than they look, and they're lighter than they average, like, they advertise 24 pounds, but it doesn't feel like 24 pounds. It feels like 15 pounds or something. I don't know why. It's just yeah. it's just easy to carry. Uh, one thing I didn't like as well is the uh, battery gauge is really hard to tell when you're out. As soon as you get past, as soon as you see one bar, you're pretty much done. You're pretty much out of battery, and you will notice the top speeds start to slow down when you reach that point. But it wasn't anything. The new XG has a better better battery indicator. Yeah. But that's why it's nice having a spare battery. You don't have to worry about it. I highly recommend buying the, the extra battery, which I think is 200 US. And yeah, it gives you a lot less like range anxiety knowing that like if you got that far on one charge, you can get back with your extra battery. Yeah. So now I'm curious to see how, they haven't made the bag yet, the travel bag for the XG, but I'm curious to see the improvements because I'm sure they'll put those improvements in the OG bag as well. Like for example, the zipper broke off right away, uh, and the bag putting into the bag experience wasn't the best, mind you. It's a lot easier once you've done it once. It, it gets easier every time. I think because the bag does stretch out, like I mentioned before. But all in all, coming back was clear sailing. Uh, the, the TSA didn't check the, the batteries, got it back in the Uber, brought them back. And uh, we. Kate said to me when we got back, she's like, that was definitely worth the hassle. Oh, yeah. We were gone for only two days. So the fact that it was like, it seemed like a lot of work to bring them there for two days. It was definitely worth it. Mind you, we have Aeroplan status, so we have free checked luggage. If you have to pay 35 bucks to check each bag and you're only gone for a day or two. I still feel like it, it be. could be worth it because like renting a bike would be somewhat expensive. Yeah, it just and... depends on the cost when you get there. But yeah. 70 bucks each is I think what it would cost if we checked our bags, if we didn't have the status. Yeah. And for a two day trip might not be worth it, but we're going to Costa Rica in December and we're definitely bringing those bikes there because we can't bring an EUC, we can't bring an e-scooter, mm -hmm. we can't bring a regular e-bike. These things have kind of hit a niche the market that's really cool. If you own a yacht, Dima, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you have an RV, if you live out of your van, this is the perfect accessory for those. Yeah. Or if you just live in a small apartment and you, and, and you want something that's small and easy to ride, no learning curve at all, anyone can get on this and go, I guess, if you can know how to ride a bike. If you don't know how to ride a bike, you have to learn how to ride a bike, I guess. Yeah. But all in all, I think that, I really think I, uh, I covered it. I, I really liked almost everything about it. I do wish that the fender kits and the seat accessories would fit in the travel bag. It sucks that you can't bring the fender kit without taking it off because it won't fit in the bag if you do have that installed. Same with the other accessories. None of the accessories will really fit uh, if you in the travel bag, and I think they should make their access accessories compatible with the travel bag. That's really my only beef next to the <laughs> initial experience of the travel bag. So thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm. uh, most of you are already EUC riders or scooter riders, or maybe you're coming, you're new to the YouTube channel. I want to know your thoughts. Would you want to buy one of these? They retail for $9.99 US or $13.99 Canadian for the OG. Um, I think $17.99 for the US for the XG or $23.99 Canadian. Would you add it to your quiver of personal electric vehicles? Let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know why not. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.